All right, people are just coming in. Wait a few more minutes for people to come in. People are just coming in. This is being uh, recorded and we're gonna stream it to YouTube as well. So um, you'll find it on the page where you found the registration for this meeting. So if anybody wants to go back to the discussion tonight, you can. Alrighty. Um, I just uh, will introduce myself. I'm Alex Henderson. I'm the planning director with the Southwestern Brunswick Service Commission. And this is Xander. You want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Xander, uh, and I'm a planner with the commission. Um, and I'll be doing the presentation tonight. Um, and then myself and Alex will uh, be listening to questions and feedback and answering the questions that we can. Why don't you take it away, Xander? All right, we'll get started. So I'm uh, just going to share my screen here and bring up the presentation. That uh, everybody see that? Um, so for those of you who don't know, Penfield and Beaver Harbor, uh, two, two local service districts, share a rural plan. Um, and tonight, um, we're going to share a first draft of an updated version of that rural plan. Um, and we want to inform residents of the LSDs, um, get your feedback, uh, understand you know, if you have concerns, questions. Um, this, is, this is not a formal public hearing. There's uh, still lots of opportunities to incorporate whatever feedback you might have. Um, nothing is set in stone at this point. So, um, we might talk about a concept uh, zone or something, but it's not, it's not actually here. It's still um, at least a few months away from adoption and lots of opportunities to incorporate your feedback. So um, that's the current zoning map of Penfield and Beaver Harbor. And um, there is one zone, it's the mixed use zone. And uh, that led to some issues. Um, number one, there's no allowance for industrial zones in that mixed use zone, uh, no for industrial uses. Um, so there were uh, applications coming to us for um, potential, uh, let's say some kind of aquaculture development and they weren't able to set up in Penfield or Beaver Harbor because of the zoning. Um, and there, had been some issues as well um, between different uses from uh, maybe some residential uses next to more commercial uses. Uh, we also looked at trends in industries and demographics, um, best practices in policy and legislation with the province, but other jurisdictions as well. And we did consult with the LSD chairs and other community leaders. And we've done a few uh, in-person sessions with residents as well. Um, June 19th and 20th, uh, we did one in Penfield and one in Beaver Harbor um, back in 2019. So rural plans are, uh, they, they move from a sort of general concept to a, a specific concept. So we're gonna move in that same direction and the overall objectives are uh, quite general to preserve and enhance beauty, the environment and rural character, regulate development so it is fiscally and ecologically sustainable and balance growth opportunities to minimize conflicts between different uses. Um, and as I mentioned before, we have seen some land use conflicts in Penfield and Beaver Harbor. So this is one of the reasons why um, it was clear to us that there was a need for uh, an updated rural plan. The policy areas are uh, more general than um, the objectives, um, but they're still uh, fairly general um, and, and provide broad direction. So for residential policies to keep incompatible non-residential uses out of residential zones, concentrate growth, avoid sprawl, um, for larger subdivisions, uh, using kind of a, a, a newer idea of um, what's either called residential cluster development, 
conservation subdivisions. Um, it's, it's a more efficient use of land that preserves more open space and uh, for conservation or community use um, and does allow for uh, getting smaller lots that would otherwise be allowed for subdivision. Um, commercial and tourism policies to limit the environmental impact, concentrate larger scale developments along Route 175. Uh, I think that's also Penfield Ridge Road um, and in Beaver Harbor. So places where those are already existing. Industrial, um, there is some light industry um, along, uh, let's say Mealy Road. Um, I think there's uh, like a, a fishing net operation um, up there. Um, so that would be considered light industry and there is already some of it. Um, heavy industry really there isn't any of, but it, it was very important in crafting this plan to find areas away from residential uses that wouldn't have environmental impacts um, that could allow for some kind of industrial park. Um, any of these industrial uses would require, I believe it's 30 meters of screening buffer. So, uh, you know, like a, uh, a stand of trees um, usually is what people use for buffers. Um, and it would be a very strict criteria for rezoning. So a whole list of things to consider when uh, moving something from another zone into an industrial zone. Institutional, uh, those are cultural, religious, social, and educational needs of the community. And, um, while they're not as impactful as industrial, they still can have an impact in terms of maybe parking. Um, so those large scale uses along Route 175 and, and in Beaver Harbor, and you have uh, quite a few of those, you know, Penfield Lions Club, um, Quaker Hall and Beaver Harbor, uh, those, those would be considered institutional uses. Recreation and open space, um, certainly encouraging recreational uses, preserving open space through passive recreational uses, encouraging trails for motorized and active transportation in large developments, but also generally thinking about how, um, you know, we know that um, recreational transportation is, is a big part of rural New Brunswick, and that can be ATVs, that can be people on bicycles. Um, so having that be a part of Penfield, uh, definitely part of the vision moving forward. In terms of resources, uh, ensuring that there's some kind of rural resource base, and, and generally that's agriculture and forestry, um, but it does need to be done in a sustainable way. And of course, uh, in Charlotte County, that resource is, is often um, fish, uh, be that aquaculture or fisheries. So encouraging that and developing that in appropriate locations. Um, protecting water supplies, so no development that depletes or degrades the water supplies and developing only where adequate uh, supply exists. Heritage history and archaeology, um, there is, there's quite actually a rich history in Penfield and Beaver Harbor that uh, maybe isn't super well known, um, but there's uh, one of the oldest um, signs of, of human settlement in, in this area was found in Penfield, uh, showing, um, I, I believe it was the Passamaquoddy, um, some, some kind of settlement from about 13,000 years ago. Um, and, and as well, the Quaker history in Beaver Harbor is, is very interesting. And, and there is um, with Quaker Hall, um, you know, uh, that's, that's a good resource um, for the community to remember their history by. So conserving the physical environment, considering the impacts of climate change, especially um, along the coast with sea level rise, but also inland flooding, minimizing impacts on air, land, and water, preserving biodiversity and minimizing interruption of habitat. And finally, uh, making sure that development happens where the environment allows for it. Um, there's uh, plenty of room to develop, so there's, there's no reason to be developing in wetlands or um, places where the environment isn't suited to it. So as we move from uh, more general to less general, um, even though these are called general provisions, we're into the zoning part of the bylaw now, the rural plan bylaw. And this is the part that um, generally for residents uh, is, is where you would interact with the rural plan the most. Um, and it is the most specific. It has you know, allowed uses in different zones. Um, so in the rural residential and mixed use zones, um, one of the important things we wanted to consider for this area is um, the allowance of traditional and small scale fisheries really um, in most areas. And those would have to be smaller than 200 square meters and not high impact seafood processing. So 
Um, these would be operations that um, really wouldn't have any impact on the neighbors. Uh, there wouldn't be odor or noise, um, nothing that would, would make it be considered an industrial use. Hobby and small scale farming, um, home-based businesses, industries of limited size and scale. Uh, some limited tourism uses, but those would have to be subject to terms and conditions that the service commission would apply. And now we'll talk about the specific zones. We'll, we'll come back to some of those general provisions. Um, so the industrial zone, uh, which I suppose would be a new zone, um, and that's to accommodate existing or potential industrial uses. As I mentioned, that 30 meter buffer, so anywhere where there's um, you know, an industrial next to mixed use or industrial next to residential, um, there would have to be a large shelter belt of trees. Um, this zone would allow for salvage yards or uh, you might call them junkyards and higher impact processing plants. And it's zoned where limited residential development already exists. And uh, near the end of the presentation, you'll be able to see the zoning map. So um, you'll, you'll see where the, this area is um, slated to go. And it also requires good road access because uh, with, with industry comes um, trucks and trucks are heavy and they have a major impact on roads. And also it's very important um, to make sure that industrial pollutants aren't um, impacting an aquifer or surface water uh, in any way. The mixed use zone, um, this is, uh, as it says, it's mixed use, so it allows for a variety of land uses. Um, and it's more of a commercial zone. Uh, and so therefore it makes sense to have it around key nodes, uh, like on Penfield Ridge Road in Beaver Harbor, um, in some cases uh, requiring water access. So higher traffic commercial or light industry, that would include warehousing, aquaculture, uh, restaurants and retail. Um, higher impact uses would require community consultation and terms and conditions that we would apply. This does not allow for junkyards or heavy industrial uses. And you can do um, all sorts of residential in the zone as well, multifamily, mobile home parks, mini home parks, tourism uses, campgrounds, um, as well as institutional uses. So this is fairly similar to the mixed use zone that exists now, which is the whole planning area. Um, and, and what the real difference is, is we've really shrunk where the zone goes. Um, and again, you'll see that on the zoning maps. Agriculture and forestry zone. Uh, this is really in low population areas where land has not been developed. And there really isn't a lot of, um, there aren't public roads, those kinds of things. Uh, most of North Penfield would be in this category. And it's important to keep larger tracts of land so that um, you can have a viable farming operation or a viable woodlot. And it does allow for the development of undersized lots uh, that exist currently. Um, and there would be, um, they would be considered, a residential should be considered a secondary use to a primary farming or woodlot use. So, um, if you had some kind of farm on your property and you had a house as well, that would be totally appropriate in the zone, as well as, you know, if you have a small woodlot um, and a house that that works in the zone too. This zone also allows for uh, large scale livestock operation. That's that's not just like, um, you know, a few cow or or chickens. That's that's a major operation that's defined by the province and um, it couldn't go anywhere within I believe it's 600 meters of an existing residential development. So um, it's very much limited in where it can go and there's none currently. Um, fairly unlikely there would be any in the future, but if it does happen, we do wanna plan for that. This uh, intensive resource development zone is really only exists in North Penfield. It's where we've um, seen mineral deposits uh, that might have claims on them. Um, and so it allows for mining operations and associated structures, um, but all of those would require provincial approvals and um, they're usually on crown lands really far away from any other residential uses. 
The environmentally sensitive zone uh, is kind of a buffer zone that goes along waterways um, as well as wetlands and um, the ocean. So the uses are quite limited um, because the purpose of the zone is to prevent pollution, pre prevent um, any kind of uh, toxins from getting into the groundwater. It, it kind of complements some existing regulations like um, the wetland and water course alteration permits that you might have had to get before if you're trying to do anything within 30 meters of um, a water course, uh, as well as well field protection. There is a, pr a preliminary well field in um, Penfield that feeds uh, the community of Blacks Harbor and Beaver Harbor as well. Um, so it's very important that the province hasn't actually designated that as a protected well field. So um, the only thing protecting it from some kind of intensive development would be this zone. Uh, so it includes setbacks for sea level rise and inland flooding risks, as well as other hazards. Um, I mentioned that it's zoned along creeks, streams, surface water. It also uh, limits tree clearing um, to prevent erosion and to maintain habitats and natural aesthetics. And, and while it does limit tree clearing, um, we've already had some questions of, does this mean I have to plant trees? And no, it doesn't mean you have to plant trees. It might mean you have to leave areas where trees can grow, um, but trees play such an important role in erosion. Um, I think often an overlooked role that uh, it is very important in these areas to um, protect against erosion and um, to, to really keep the habitats viable and, and to in some ways allow for future development. Uh, so it does allow for very limited residential uses, really just a single family dwelling. Um, and that would have to meet certain requirements and, and it's likely there would be, um, unless you're on the ocean, you would still have to get those Wawa permits from the province. So the rural residential zone, um, sorry, my uh, bullet points are all out of order. Um, this is more your rural suburban type residential zone. Um, most residential properties would fall into this category. And um, if any kind of home-based business or industry or uh, that you know traditional small scale fishery, that would be a secondary use. It does permit institutional uses. Um, but as I said, larger scale institutional uses um, might not be appropriate in the zone. And the provincial subdivision regulation limits this to one acre lots for subdivisions, but um, with these conservation subdivisions or residential cluster developments, it's, it's a way around that with the common septic system so you can go under one acre, but um, there are uh, criteria for how to do that. And it allows single family in-law garden suites and up to four unit dwellings. So um, for some multi-unit, although that is limited by uh, septic capabilities. And we tried to limit this area to where there already were residential developments. There was public road access, there were community nodes. Uh, you'll see all that on the zoning map. And as I mentioned, any of these um, general provisions of secondary uses, hobby farming, home-based business, and those fisheries would be allowed. Coastal residential zone is the second residential zone. Um, and it's, it's fairly similar to rural residential, although it um, limits the types of uh, residential uses. So uh, many homes would have to be up to a certain standard, be fairly new, be um, on, uh, on slabs, that kind of thing. Um, does allow for some tourism, hobby farm, small scale fishery. Um, but as I said, no older mobile home parks, um, but many homes that are, are of a certain uh, standard and of a certain year would be permitted. Um, and this is limited to where this type of development already exists. So um, given that it's coastal residential, obviously this is gonna be on the ocean front. And just like uh, I mentioned before with the rural residential, you can get around that provincial subdivision regulation if you're doing conservation subdivisions. So uh, we're at the part of the presentation where um, we're gonna take a look at the zoning map and um, just given the large size of the planning area, it's split into three sections. Um, I'll put up in the chat after this, we'll put up some links where you can go and um, download this map. You can zoom in, um, you know, try and find your individual property. Um, but so just using Beaver Harbor here as an example, the yellow 
um, would be that rural residential. The green would be coastal residential, the lighter green. Blue is mixed use. So you've got it where there's that, um, the working wharf in Beaver Harbor. Um, you don't see, I believe there's one having already in use heavy industrial site over here, although I can't actually remember what it is. Um, but generally there, there really isn't any of that in Beaver Harbor. Um, the brown would be the agriculture and forestry. These green kind of snakes, um, the darker green, that's the environmentally sensitive zone. So you can see it going along the water courses here and along the um, edge of the ocean. Uh, and there's a few other zones that you that aren't actually present in this image, so I'll move along. So this is uh, what I call South Penfield. You've got Penfield Ridge Road running along here. This is Highway 1, Beaver Harbor, uh, where we just were down here. Um, so a few existing industrial sites, but this area of land over here um, is what we're proposing to be an industrial park um, essentially. So it allows if new industrial operations want to set up, um, focusing them in an area away from residential development. Um, there, is, there are some environmental uh, sensitive zones, but there is room to develop around those. You've got good highway access, good road access. Um, so uh, we, we think it's a very good location for any type of that future development. You can see the rural residential running along the public access roads. Um, and then you've got the mixed use here along Penfield Ridge Road. Um, and then uh, some coastal residential where we're seeing that type of development already where subdivisions have already occurred. But um, knowing the needs of um, industry, there, there is reason to preserve some oceanfront land for um, aquaculture fisheries usage. Uh, and finally, North Penfield, um, not a whole lot going on. Um, it's, it's basically the woods. And so therefore you've got a lot of agriculture and forestry zoning and that dotted kind of overlay, that's where um, there are some mineral deposit claims um, that could be exploited in the future. So um, they're, they're kind of pre-zoned for that with this. So that's the end of the presentation and I'll pop this link into the chat box. Um, so you can go there and you can see the full draft of the rural plan. You can uh, download a copy of the zoning map that you can zoom in on. Um, and I'll pop that in the chat box. I'm also going to pop um, my phone number and my email and uh, the office's address. So um, if you have any specific questions, um, you're welcome to ask them tonight, but um, it might make more sense for you to get in touch with us personally if you have specific questions about your property. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it back over to Alex and he'll um, sort of moderate as people ask questions and give feedback. Thanks, Andrew. So what I'm gonna do is um, we're gonna try to get through everybody tonight. We don't have a, a lot of people online. It looks like it's a uh, 10, 10 uh, people who are um, dialed in. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give everybody, uh, we would like to have uh, some good discussion from everybody. So maybe try to keep your comments to five minutes or uh, we'll, we can have back and forth discussion, whatever you really like to talk about. And we're, as we said at the beginning of this, uh, we don't have a finalized draft that we're discussing. This is, um, this is an open process so um, really we can, we can take things back to the drawing board. Um, so with that, I'm gonna start with the per first person here who's calling in. Your phone number ends with 6297. So just uh, if you could introduce yourself. Might take a moment for you to uh, unmute. You might have to dial star six, I'm not sure, but uh, We'll give you a moment here. We'll come back to you if you can't figure it out uh, right away. All right, we'll come back to you. Um, and uh, again, try dialing star six or star nine um, to unmute if, if that's the case, if you're calling in. So next we're gonna go to Alan M. Kurtz. Alan, um, you might have to unmute yourself. Yeah, 
Um, I'm thinking about it. I don't have a question or comment quite yet. Thank you. Not a problem. Just uh, if uh, you'd like to make a comment later on, uh, you can always use the raise hand function or chat. Uh, type into chat and we'll come back to you, Alan. Thank you. All right, we're going to go to Blaine Nickerson. Blaine, you just might have to unmute yourself. Give you a moment here. And if anybody's trying to unmute yourself, there is a, um, there should be a mute uh, my audio with a microphone in the bottom uh, left corner of your screen. If you're on a cell phone, you might have to tap your screen to see it um, or a, a tablet, you might have to just tap the screen once and then you'll, your toggle bar will show up. Blaine, we'll come back to you if, uh, if you want to talk later on. Okay, we're going to go with Donna uh, Bovalenis. Okay, can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, good evening, Alex and Xander. And I have Roger with me as well. So, uh, you know, I think I'd like to turn it over to Roger, actually, because he has some comments to make. Okay, the only comments I have to make uh, there, gentlemen, is... Um, to admire the amount of work you have both done on it, frustrating through the COVID period, et cetera, and uh, keep at it very basically. Uh, Donna and I are right behind your thinking and uh, carry on that light, and I'm sure we'll see um, some uh, uh, fruition to a new revised plan in the near future. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, is that everything you'd like to ask or say? Um, I don't have that much. Uh, I have spoken to you in the past uh, qu quite a bit there, Alex, and I think you know my feelings. Um, we are very pleased to see the coastal, uh, okay, residential areas um, outlined and the rural, um, uh, okay, residential outlined as well, plus um, your emphasis on the buffer zones, which as you know, with the, uh, the situation we have here in Beaver, uh, there, uh, there was an application, as you well know, we went through PRAC, we won our case, so to speak, if, if that's the right words, but the real problem with that, um, application was the land was cleared before the hearing. So we are left with a deforested four acre eyesore in a coastal residential area. And uh, that's unfortunate it happened, but uh, you know, so to speak, what's happened has happened. Now we have to try to avoid that happening again. And I think you are on the right track to do that. All right, well, that's great, Roger. Okay, we're gonna go to the next person here. Um, Doug Bailey. Doug Bailey, you just might have to unmute yourself. Yep, there, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Good, good. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of additional comments other than some of the communications you and I have had. Uh, I, I kind of concur with Roger. Overall, it looks like quite a good plan, seems to have taken into account most of the, the issues that have kind of come up in the area. I think there's still some, some odd places like the lot that we're on that maybe the, the plan didn't contemplate entirely. And uh, some of the comments about the trees, uh, not having to plant trees, I, I recognize that's probably a, a good idea and, and clarifies things a bit for me. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm wondering, will those kind of things get uh, incorporated into the, the final draft of this plan. Because um, I can see a, a whole lot of things when you're uh, requiring trees, like how big a trees, what trees. Um, and in fact, it appears as though the plan was contemplating just people not clearing existing trees rather than uh, putting in new trees. And, and maybe if that clarification can made that 
that uh, simplifies things. Xander, did you want to reply to that? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I think in the plan itself, it it might not be the clearest, and sometimes the way these policies are written, um, it's not exactly common language. Um, but the intent, and and we'll work to make this a little bit clearer in that language, is is really to limit tree clearing, and and um, I mean planting trees is always a good idea, but uh, not something that would be required by the plan. Yeah, and in my case, it's the, the lot we're on is a an ocean small oceanfront lot, and the only place you could plant trees is between the house and the ocean, which kind of defeats the purpose of having an oceanfront lot. It yeah. blocks your view of the ocean. <laughs> right. The intent of the, that environmentally sensitive zone is not to prevent development uh, and not even to block your view of the ocean, um, but uh, it's really to uh, encourage people to you know, cut narrow swaths to the ocean when they have a view as opposed to doing a whole clear cut, um, right. yeah. which is happening right on the, the, uh, the coast. and. Really, I think um, I, uh, the previous uh, resident, uh, Roger, had mentioned that really in the current plan, there's nothing to prevent that clear cutting right down to the, the water's edge yep. uh, on the ocean. There is with the uh, inland because of the um, regulations the province has with Wawa permits. Yes. But when it's the ocean, it's a, uh, this rural plan would be the only thing to protect that. Yeah, no, uh, agreed. Well, I had one simple question, uh, won't take up a lot of time. The, the sort of coastal buffer zone or uh, environmental sensitive zone, where does that start and end? Like, is, is it a band so many meters wide? Yeah, um, so it goes from the ordinary high water mark, uh, okay. basically high tide, it's the average of a bunch of high tides, but high tide, um, 30 meters inland. 30 meters, okay. All right. All right, Doug. That's it for me. Thank you. We're going to go to Margaret Hawkins. Margaret, just uh, might have to unmute yourself. Hi. Hi. Um, I really don't have any comments or questions. I tuned in this evening to get a better idea of what was happening and what this was all about because I haven't been involved in this in the past. So I found your presentation to be very helpful, Xander. And some of the uh, terms and so on that were used in the presentation, I was kind of, uh, for example, residential cluster development how would you define that? I'm not familiar with those terms, I guess, so. You could uh, help the role plan this screen share, Xander, in the second. Yeah, good point. Um, we can look at the exact definition for how we've defined that. Right. Oh, Alex, got it. Um, that would be... I think we use the terminology in the plan, but I'm going to just double check that one. No, oh, it's right there. Um, so it means a development where the size of the developed area is concentrated in order to permanently preserve at least half, 50%, or more of the total original parcel as commonly owned space, natural conservation area, or as a registered agricultural land. Um, so, the, and Alex might be able to explain this better than I do because he's a little bit more experienced, but um, when you think of your normal, like you want to do a large subdivision, most developers want to um, create as many lots as they can um, to maximize their profit. And they might do that in a way that doesn't really consider the topography of the land. There might be wetlands, there might be um, really steep areas. So you might end up with not a great lot in that case. And, um, and it also means you have this kind of ever expanding residential development um, that we, we call rural sprawl, which is something we're trying to avoid with this plan. 
So with conservation subdivisions, it kind of flips it and says, instead of trying um, to get as many lots as you can, use the topography of the land, use the natural features um, as amenities and say, these are, these are common areas. Uh, maybe they're for agriculture, maybe they're for uh, walking trails, um, cycling trails, that kind of thing. And put the residential lots as smaller, um, smaller lots that really fit in with the landscape. And you can go under an acre because for that you're doing um, a common septic system. So instead of each of those lots having their own septic, and that's really why the province requires that acre is to make sure that wells and septics are far away from each other. But if you have a common septic system, um, you can get around that and uh, do these smaller, um, I would say better incorporated into the environment types of subdivisions. So that's that's how I would explain it. I don't know, Alex, if you want to add anything. Yeah, there would be just one more one more component to that, which is that um, if you're doing smaller than an acre and um, you don't have the common system, there can be there can be challenges with common septic systems. Um, then the I, other idea is to do airland condominium. So you're actually not subdividing the property. You're just developing it um, with a condominium model, meaning instead of a piece simple lot, you have a unit in a development. And um, you can do it in a rural setting. It's been done very successfully in uh, New England. Lots of good examples of it where very, uh, very nice developments are done in rural areas. And, um, but you're just in a, it's instead of like a road owner association, you have a condo association. And um, so that that way you can potentially uh, work out your individual septic systems if you have equivalent types of space in the common areas for uh, septic. However, we do make the note, if you are going to develop one of these bare line condos, you will need the correct permission through public safety or Department of Health and Department of Environment in your septic or uh, common septic system of choice. And it can be a little bit more complicated, but uh, that's what we're here for. If you're interested in developing property in that way, we'll help you guide you through that approval process. Thank um, you very much. I have a, a diagram here that I think might help to explain it as well. Um, so I'm just gonna share my screen. So on the left of the diagram um, is kind of a, a more traditional subdivision design. So you can see there's larger lots um, and, and basically everything becomes private property in this case with a few minor conservation areas. On the right, this would be a conservation subdivision. The residential cluster development um, could be a bare land condo. Um, so it's the same number of units, same number of houses. They're just, the houses are more concentrated each property has a little bit less space, but then you have all of these open common areas um, with walking trails and woods. Um, and uh, so for, for maybe a, a larger common area, you give up a little bit of um, your personal space. But as I mentioned before, give, because this is done to the topography of the land, um, you might have just as much usable space on the lot as you do with these larger lots because um, you know some of these lots are going to have water courses or, or wetlands or streams running through them. Um, so hopefully that that does a better job. But I, uh, again, if you're interested in doing something like that, I definitely encourage you to come into the office and talk to us or give us a call. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, we're going to Maureen Richard. Maureen Richards, sorry. Um, Maureen, you're just gonna have to mute your, unmute yourself, sorry. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Hello? Hello. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I really don't have uh, at this point uh, a lot of questions or concerns. Um, I haven't actually reviewed in detail the document, however, over the presentation this evening did answer a lot of questions and clarified a lot of points. And um, other than that, uh, I think probably once I do get into it heavily, I will have some questions, but I will shoot them off either via email or whatever works. 
you can drop on into our office too or just in St. Stephen's. So right. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. The link to the where you can find the full plan um, is in the chat box. I think the last person we have uh, online is Wayne Corey. And Wayne uh, is the LSD uh, chairman for um, Penfield. So I don't know if you wanted to make any comments today, Wayne, but I'll promote your speaking role here. Wayne, do you want to try saying something if you if you wanted to talk? Not sure. We can't hear you, but it looks like you did unmute yourself. All right. Well, if if you do want to chat, Wayne, uh, you know where to find us. So uh, we'll uh, we'll get back to you there. All right, and I think there was some people who did, uh, I'm gonna go back to, um, it was the phone number 6297. All right, but if, uh, if you wanted to speak, I think we just need to get you to unmute yourself. Star six, I believe, or star nine. Give you a moment here. Okay, I think uh, it's probably you don't, you're not really uh, either able to speak tonight or uh, some, you just don't uh, want to speak right, for right now. So that's fine. Um, and I think we've covered everybody. If anybody wished to speak and we didn't get to you or you had some more things to add, you could just type into the chat box. Oh, Alan Kerr is here. We'll go back to you. Alan, uh, just gonna mute. Sorry. No worries. Yeah, this may or may not be relevant to your things that are within your jurisdiction, but if a private property owner uh, has a development and uh, wants to create an access road, which is within the affected zone, but may affect the adjacent zones. Does that become part of the planning commission's uh, province or is this something that is a local issue? The township or the... If there's noise from trucks, as an example. Okay, so um, are you talking about if somebody's developing their property and they, they uh, uh, need an access road, they build an access sure. road to yeah. start the development? Yeah, so the commission does handle those approvals. Um, when it comes to um, more than just a private access road, it's a public road, then the commission will work with the Department of uh, Transportation to uh, get those approvals in place. So when there is um, uh, when there is a private access subdivision being proposed, normally these don't go to a public. Um, uh, we don't do pu public advertisements for them unless they're very large scale developments. But that's for the for that purpose. So they're the public are informed for the larger scale ones. Um, but with regard to noise for trucking, we're, we're one of the big things I think, and Xander, you can jump in. I, the big thing I think about with regards to trucking and the impact of trucking is to just make sure that industrial zones are located in areas that have good access to public road and they're not um, not having to tramp through residential areas to get to a, to a highway. Xander, did you have anything to add? Um, no, not. Not really. Um, I mean, I know there can be a case where you have, uh, it might not be an industrial area, but someone's building and, and it does lead to more truck traffic. Um, there is not a whole lot we can do about that. I mean, if there's becomes like dangerous or unsightly situations, um, really the province 
deals deals with that. I mean, if there's excessive, um, I mean, there's really no noise regulations in rural areas, and that's that's not in our jurisdiction. Um, so, except for the roads, the physical roads themselves, um, which which is really more DTI than us, but we do have some um, with the subdivision process. We do have some involvement, um, but the noise, um, as Alex said the what we what we try to do is for industrial developments keep them away from residential developments so that trucking noise isn't an impact but that might not really be what you're thinking about alan no no that's part of it thank you very much for a fine presentation you're welcome if there's anybody else uh, you could use the raise hand and put your uh, thoughts into the chat and if not uh we're we're uh, available by phone, Xander put in the uh, phone number and the address. You can always drop in. Uh, we have some bit of COVID regulations coming in the door, but uh, we can certainly still meet in person. Um, and uh, yeah, as we said, this is not going to be uh, going to a formal public hearing right away. Uh, there still have to be comments from all the various provincial governments on this draft. And um, uh, so there could be changes into the draft um, uh, yet. But uh, even before, uh, sorry, even after the conference, we all had a look at it. The whole community will get another look at it in the form of the, pu the public hearing of objections, which is the um, uh, a requirement before any regulation becomes uh, any planning regulation becomes uh, law. So all of you will be able to uh, certainly continue to contribute to the process and certainly have a look at the final draft before it becomes uh, a law. So with that, I think we will conclude and just wanna thank everybody for participating tonight and keep the comments coming in. Have a good night.